Hi guys, it's Mr. Alex from Midwood High School, and today we're looking at atomic theory, starting our new unit on atomic theory and atomic structure. Okay, so we're going to do some history now. Now today we're going to look at Dalton's atomic theory, right? And Dalton proposed that um, matter, okay, is made up of atoms, right? And he said the atoms were basically indivisible, therefore you can't get any smaller parts or any smaller components uh, to them, okay? They're just, you know, hard spheres, okay? He also proposed that compounds, right, were made up of atoms, okay, and they were, when they um, combine, right, they combine in definite ratios. We talked about before when we have compounds H2O and ACL, C6H12O6 for sugar, uh, glucose, and so on, right? So compounds, he said, um, when the atoms combine, different atoms combine, they combine in specific or definite ratios. He also said in his theory, right, in terms of chemical reactions, right, um, the form is to form compounds and so on. There's a rearrangement of these different atoms to produce new things. Okay, and his model of the atom was the cannonball, compared to the cannonball, or sometimes called the billiard ball model. Now, Dalton proposed this around, um, if I'm not mistaken, around 1803, around, around that time. So, um, yeah, okay, so we're going to move on. Thompson's model. Now, Thompson came up with the experiment that's going to change um dalton's model make an improvement now what's going to happen here folks i'm not going to give the actual name of the model here okay but what i'm going to do i'm going to try and sort of kind of duplicate his cathode ray tube experiment okay um he did this experiment almost 100 years later okay he had a power source okay and he used a vacuum tube okay this tube right here Okay, guys, um, most of the air, almost all the air is taken out. Okay, now if you see that front inside of it, right, you see this guy with a, um, a slit right there and this metal coated right there. Okay, he we did test on metals. Now, this side over here, folks, that will be the cathode. Now, don't stress too much right now in terms of if you don't know what a cathode is and if you don't know what an anode is and so on, right? We're going to learn more about that later on in um electrochemistry okay also um we'll learn about cat ions and anions so maybe then also it'll make sense but since we haven't learned any of that stuff don't stress what the actual cathode is or anode is but just know the, um certain charges are related to them okay Alrighty. so he was doing tests with metals right in this vacuum tube right here now he also had a power source which i'm going to grab in a second okay ah. Grab this power source, bam, put it right here. See that? That's a Tesla coil, people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, but he used a more, I guess, a more uh, pretty much um, better power source than this. But this, this works pretty good, okay? So, this is a Tesla coil. Uh, we're gonna apply, okay, the energy, the electricity to the cathode over here, and we're gonna observe what happens. So, we're gonna go through some more of what, okay, Thompson um, did in this particular experiment. Okay, so he used the tube as we said before, is a vacuum, so most of the air is taken out as we said before. Okay, now when he um, applied the energy or the electricity, right, it was from the cathode to the anode. Okay, now when he saw the ray, right, the question was, does this ray um, contain an electrical charge? So he tested the ray with a magnet and he also did tests with the ray in terms of having positive, right, and negatively charged electrical plates. Now, we're going to discuss these things tomorrow in class in terms of the magnet and in terms of electrical plates and the results and what was the name of his model, right? But right now, what I want to do, I want to try and do the experiment. I don't have all the wiring to do this experiment, but we still can get some idea of what happened. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. So here's the deal. This is our cathode ray tube right here, yes? Okay. Now I'm going to flip this to the back and show you something. All right. See that? Silver, right? Okay. Silver colored. And over here, it's more of a whiter, duller color, right? Now, that whiter, duller color is a specific compound, right, to allow the ray to show better in terms of its luminescence, right? So what we're going to do, guys, remember this side is our cathode side and this side is our anode side, okay? We are going to apply our our power source, the Tesla coil, to this cathode side. Now we're expecting, right, the ray to come up from this side and travel through here and go towards the anode, okay, side. So here's the deal. 
I want you guys to look very carefully, right, at this um, rectangular part right here to see if you see any ray, to see if you see any color. Now, I'm also going to use a magnet, okay, to see if there's any deflection in the ray. So if you see any type of deflection in the ray, just keep your eyes open for that. I'll try and put a magnet over here and try above and beyond, um, below to see if there's any kind of deflection and you keep your eyes open for that, okay? So what do you keep your eyes open for? Two things. The ray itself traveling across, right? Okay, and any type of deflection that we're gonna get when we use the magnet. So once again, it's my Tesla coil right here. Okay, I got my magnet right here, and this is our cathode ray tube. Okay, with the uh, side coated right here of the compound, so we can see the ray much better. I'm gonna be turning the lights off, guys. Okay, so so it's, you can, guys can see better in terms of the ray, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so the lights are off. Here we go. All right, do you see anything, guys? Okay. All right, see that ray right there? Okay, that's the, that's the ray that came out, okay? Now, he didn't really know what was that ray, what it was composed of, okay, and so on, right? So what happens from that? Curiosity builds up, and a lot of tests are going to be done on it um, in terms of to see, you know, does this ray have a charge or not? Um, what was the charge and so on? So I'm going to take the magnet, right, and put it underneath first. And then tell me if you see any kind of deflection. You gotta look carefully. Do you see the ray bending up or down or anything? Reacting to the magnet that I'm, that I'm, that I'm putting right there. Okay, so there I go, bam, bam. Okay, I, I can see it going up a bit, bam. Okay, you see that? Beautiful, all right, cool, bam. Alrighty, so once again, folks, that's the cathode ray two experiment, right, by JJ Thompson. Okay, let me flip the lights back on. Okay. Okay, cool. Alrighty. All right, folks. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. We're going to talk more about this in class later on as into what was the ray actually composed of. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys. Take care.